Okay, so here we are. Um, I'm going to talk about project one, which is restoring and colorizing an old photo um, of your choice. So let me just go right into the module here. Now notice I do have a tutorial here on um, using a scanner. If you um, have your own personal photo that you decide to use for this project, um, this is a tutorial on how to correctly scan an image um, for this project. So you may or may not need that. You may or may not need it for a project in the future or another class. So just keep that in mind. Take a look at it if you have a few minutes to do so. Um, I'm going to go into the project um, page here. Okay. Obviously, I am making the video lecture right now. So if you viewed this page previously, once I'm done with this video, I'll be uploading it to this spot. Um, but in our first project, we will repair, restore, and colorize a damaged photo. If you want to have some fun with this project, you can choose to add additional elements to the image. Okay? So the, the basic requirement is to repair and add color to an old photo that is damaged. Um, a lot of students like to have fun with this and add some extra stuff into it, so please feel free to do so. Um, post your project draft by May 29th, so that's 10 days from the date of this recording, the 19th. Um, respond to group member critiques by June 1st, so we will be submitting like kind of a midterm project. You don't need to be all the way done, obviously, but it's just kind of a review of the direction you're going and to keep you on track and allow for some input prior to submitting your final version um, from your peers, okay, and from me. Um, and then once you have finished your project and turn it in, uh, we'll be submitting for peer critiques um, at that same time. And then peer critiques will be due three days after submitting your, your project and your draft, okay. Um, so let's review this example slideshow. Just click on it, it should open up the slideshow. Let's make this full screen and I'm just gonna turn me off for a minute while we go over this. Okay, so <clears throat> these are just some examples of the project and where we're going with it. Um, So this is a basic restoration, okay? So this photo was scanned in. We, we have some old photos on hand here at the um, school, but I've, I'm going to offer some of those to you that are already scanned in. And it's just a straight restoration. Obviously, um, remember that part of your grade uh, will be based on uh, how difficult it is. And this one was not difficult at all, right? Because there's very few actual issues with the image. There's one or two specs to be corrected. Maybe it's slightly faded, but there really wasn't any corrections to be made. Um, and they added color to it. Okay, they had three, one, two, three, maybe four, plus the eye color, five, hair, skin. Like not a lot of colors were added to this. So um, this one wouldn't score incredibly high on the difficulty rating. Um, but, so there you have it, okay? So, but it qualifies as, as what you could do for this project, okay? Now this one, I don't have the before here, but um, it was this couple kind of the, in this oval um, frame, and the student decided to put them in Disneyland, okay? The happiest place on, place on earth, right? And their faces tell it. So what was really nice about this is that um, despite the reduced quality image in the original scan, he applied that same quality of color and like noise and stuff to the background image. So that's a, a nice approach to have. Okay, this one also had the background replaced. I believe this might be an image from The Shining in the background, possibly. Uh, but notice the detail on that was added back into the dress, um, the color. Um, works really well, and the background I think is is nice. Um, it's an improvement. So if you have a, a very damaged background like this, don't think that you need to keep that. Okay, you can you can totally replace the background. 
Okay, so this is an example of one that was colorized pretty nicely as far as the people go, but um, it's somewhat incomplete, right? The background is missing any kind of added color. Um, there is pink and some green in, in here, and of course she's wearing a white dress, so it's hard to add any color to the dress, but um, we could have added some color into the background and into the, um, into the carpet down here. Okay. Okay, so this example shows how it's okay to isolate a figure uh, from your image, just don't downsize them relative to the original. So um, just don't make the person tiny in the image, okay? Make your repairs, put in a new background, do what you will, but, but try not to change the size of them in the frame. Another example, we had to remove you know, this guy and this guy here and this background is really subtle. There's a lot of detail in this. If, if you um, zoom in, you can see there's a lot of individual beads and stuff that he um, added color into, he or she. I'm, I'm not sure which student this was. This was from a different class before I started teaching it, but okay, so really nice there. Adding new backgrounds is okay. Maybe they could have done this arm a little bit better. Okay, but this background works better and makes for a more interesting image. This one, very similar, creative cropping, adding a new background and a frame um, to kind of compensate for what was a very low quality image um, that was the starting point here, okay? A lot of scratches, very little detail down here. So instead of trying to fix that, which would, you know, probably be more like making stuff than actually restoring an image. Um, they just chose to give it a tight crop and add some elements in, okay? So again, personal photos are okay to use, um, but there are requirements. One, there must be something to repair in the image. So this one is a good example. Um, <clears throat> this was a student family photo and there are scratches here, there's some spotting there's some fading going on, and all that was corrected in the um, final submission, okay? So it's okay, you, you um, can use a home photo, but you have to have something to repair in the photo. And two, if it was color, um, the color needs to be removed, and then you're going to be adding color back in by hand, because that's part of um, the requirements, okay? So as long as you remove the color and there's something to repair, home photos will work fine. This was in other students' um, picture of her mother when her mother was younger. We used to ride horses. Okay. So this one's kind of fun. And so adding props and other elements is fine um, as long as you make it effective with your design. Okay. But this is what Photoshop is all about, right? Like making some kind of new um, image out of a different photo. A creative application of imagery is encouraged. So this isn't a photo that was added in the background. It's some kind of like um, greeting card or, or old style card or something like that. And that's completely fine. It, that's um, a nice kind of design element. Other fun backgrounds. Don't be afraid to have fun with it. This one's fun. Notice the shark in the background. I think... Uh, I think it was like eating something. I don't know what, it's too hard to see here, but okay, what was kind of a boring plain shot has turned into something pretty fun here. Okay, wedding at a circus with a lion, good stuff. Okay, and also a straight restoration with, you know, some minimal added elements, added touches can also work really well. So this one was really nice. All she did was add this like wood background. She added a, uh, um, a vignette to the image, which is like the darkening of the edges here. And she trimmed up the guy's mustache. But she did a really good job at doing all of that. And so it all ties together pretty nicely. Okay, that's the last slide of this presentation. So um, let's exit full screen here and go back to our um, instructions here. So two, review the example slideshow. We just did that. Three, choose an image to restore. Okay, so where do you 
Where do you find an image at to restore? There's lots of ways to do it. One, as we discussed, if you have your own home photo, you can use that. Um, you just need to scan it at a reasonable resolution. Um, I would scan it uh, in to be 300 dpi at about 5 by 8. Okay, so that means if you have a smaller image, like a 3 by 5 image or something, you might want to scan it in at 600 dpi or higher in order to get 300 dpi at 5 by 8. Okay, and if you watch the scanning tutorial, there's a little instruction on how to do that, at least for the scanner we have. Um, try to use a source image that is at least 4 megapixels. That is about 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. If it's a portrait, that's like 1,700 by 2,300 pixels. Landscape, 2,300 by 1,700. Okay, and that's um, one because normally if this were an in-person class, we would be printing these, and so they need to be of good enough quality for printing, but also you may end up using these in your portfolio in the future. So. Um, you want to have a good quality image um, and in Photoshop we are always considering resolution and what you can do with the image when it's done whether it can be printed or not so we need to start considering this kind of stuff now okay the image must be damaged in some way otherwise or or that is also to say that your photo must require some kind of restoration due to fading ripping scratches spotting or any combination of those okay um, <clears throat> question, does it have to be black and white? The answer is no. It does not have to be black and white, but if you select a damaged color photograph to repair and use for this project, um, you will end up desaturating it. You must desaturate it and add color back in by hand using the methods we learned from our first exercise, okay? So um, just keep that in mind if you decide to use a color photo. And where can you find an appropriate image online? There's lots of ways. Um, keeping in mind the 4 megapixels are larger. Um, you could use an old family photograph. You could try Google search. I've linked a Google search here. So if I click on this, um, we see that it's looking for a damaged photograph and images. And then I've used the Google search tools here to um, dictate that I want the image to be larger than 4 megapixels. Okay, and that will help you make sure that you find an image um, of suitable resolution, okay? So obviously this comes up with a bunch of photos. Um, you may see something here that you decide you want to try to um, restore and colorize. Let's just click on this guy here. And maybe when you look at it up close, you decide that, um, no, that's not a photo I want to do, or it's too much work to do, or there's not enough information there. From this screen, you can click on this little view more, and what it will do is pull up similar images to what you already had. And keep in mind, you want to drop this down to four megapixels again. And then it gives you like a whole nother selection of similar images, usually images that need repair, that um, you can browse through to see if anything kind of piques your interest that you might want to repair, okay? Now keep in mind, this does show the resolution of the image. And then to get to the image, click on View Image right here, okay? So if I click on View Image, it will pull the image up, um, and it'll be at full resolution. And then you can just drag this onto your desktop or right-click and down, save image as, what have you. Um, but keep in mind that if it comes up with an image like this one, this image is a before and after, and so like you could use this, but keep in mind that you have to look at the resolution of it and see if the image on the left, once it's cropped down, is going to meet the resolution requirements, okay? So just be cautious of the side-by-side -side images when you are looking at the resolution. And that's something you want to keep track of is what this resolution says right here. So for example, this one is too small of resolution and it would need to be about twice the size to, to work, okay? Um, so that's how you could use Google search to find an image. There is a whole subreddit on Reddit dedicated to this, so if you haven't used Reddit before don't worry about it, but you can just click on this link and there's a whole forum of people requesting that old photoshops um, be repaired, like either due to a death in the family 
or they find an old picture of like a, a, a an older relative that they maybe didn't have a picture of, and they're looking for help from people to um, have their image restored. So you can look through here, and if you want to help somebody out, and you happen to have a Reddit account, or you want to make one, uh, once you're done with this project, you could go back to the um, submission and um, post it for them and, and tell them to have fun with it. So this one doesn't require a whole lot of repairing. That might not be a good option, but there are definitely some in here like, like this one that could be good. Um, again, you need to keep in mind like what resolution the source image is. You don't really have a lot of choice. So if I, um, if I go to view image here, this is the actual resolution of the image. And if I go to, if you right click on it from your browser, or what you can do is download it to your desktop and see if it has a good enough resolution, but you can also right click and I think go to inspect element and let's see. So if I hover over the image here, it's telling me it was 1272 by 885. So this one was not um, high enough resolution to use. The other thing you can do is just drag it to your desktop and look at the information for the image and it'll usually show the resolution. Okay, so this one's not high enough resolution. Okay, I closed Reddit somehow, but if I go back, but there are images where they've scanned them in at high enough resolution and um, you might be able to find one in here that, that um, you fancy um, restoring for somebody and, <clears throat> and colorizing. And then you're helping somebody out too. Okay, so that is another method. The final method is I have a collection of photos that um, we have here at the school that we use for this project. And so I've taken some of the ones that have already been scanned and uploaded them to my Google Drive. And you can just click here and find that there are a bunch in here. You might recognize some of these from the examples um, that we went through in the presentation. And so you could peruse these and see if there's one of these that um, you fancy. If so, just click the download button and download it. And then you should be able to use it for your project. Okay. So that's um, some sources of images for this project. Um, let's go ahead and go through the requirements here. So then after you figure out what your image is going to be, you're going to restore it, right? So the basic workflow procedure is if you're using your own image, scan it as a high enough resolution. Um, <clears throat> if you're sourcing it from online, make sure it meets the size requirements of four megapixel. Strip all of the color from the image by going to adjust and desaturate. And so you're doing that because as you might notice, a lot of these old photos are very yellowed. And so we um, desaturate them before we colorize them so that this yellow tint is not, um, is not messing with the photo, okay? So you would, once you get this into Photoshop, you would go to um, edit, adjust, desaturate. And that will take the yellowing out. And, and I'll be covering that in my next lecture. Um, you'll be working in RGB mode, so all the filters are available. Straighten the image. If it's you know tilted one way or the other, you're going to straighten it. Um, do not work in the background layer. Always, always, always make a copy of your file before you start work um, and leave it and leave the original layer untouched um, in a folder so that I can review it. And so you have something to fall back on if you make any mistakes. Um, you're going to follow the steps from exercise one to repair the damaged areas of your photo um, using a combination of the healing brush, patch tool, and clone stamp tools. You can then add any external objects that you might want to to your photo. Um, feel free to have some fun with it. A lot of the students do and can make it a fun project and keep motivated to do the work. And then finally, you will colorize it as per the exercise. Um, there are additional procedures that may be required. Um, adjusting light or faded images or dark images using bl layer blending mode tricks, including multiply, screen. I'll cover those in my next lecture. 
um, dodging and burning, and working with adjustment layers. So I'm going to be doing this project myself. Um, my next lecture will be me working on the image I select. And so I'll cover some of um, those more detailed ones um, at the beginning of that lecture just to get it out of the way and so you guys know what that stuff means. Um, specifications. Always include unedited originals, unedited originals in the file. Um, it's not okay to leave the original color in the image. Make sure you desaturate it. Um, but desaturate it after you've made a copy of it. Okay, Keep the original as is in the file. Um, it's okay to add items into the photo, including backgrounds, additional objects, etc., but do not reduce the size of the main subject in the frame. Okay, You may crop it slightly tighter, but don't crop it so much that you're reducing the resolution. The finished piece should be about 4 megapixels. Um, the document should be set to 300 dpi, and what that should yield you is a 5 by 8 approximately 5x8 image at 300 dpi. Finally, you'll be uploading your digital file with layers into, in the groups um, to the file sharing service, setting it for sharing, and um, sharing it for critique. Okay. Make sure that you're deleting all unused layers, so any working layers that might have been in there that um, you didn't up, end up using, delete those. And then make sure you're labeling and grouping your layers together in a meaningful way. Okay, that's just keeping the file organized so that if somebody else is working with a file, um, it's pretty clear what's happening in there without um, having to guess which layer is which. That's, that's why we label everything. I'm just going to go in here and fix this last. Step five should be the bigger text here. go. Okay, so that is project one. Um, hopefully the instructions were clear. Feel free to email me or ask any questions over email if you, if you want to talk about it. Um, we can do a Skype call or something. Um, go ahead and get a hold of me and plan that out. Otherwise, um, I'm looking forward to everyone's projects and I'll be here we get on Tuesday. Um, Tuesday is the, let's see, what day is Tuesday? Tuesday is the 24th. So I'll be streaming again on Tuesday and then uploading the video. And it's just going to be me working on my photo. Okay. All right. You guys have a good weekend.